Hey folks, Dan Furrow here with your market update for May 30th, 2024. So if you watch me on a daily basis, rates just keep going up, up, up and away, but that's going to halt today. Why? There's a lot of retraction in the markets right now. You saw this Dow Jones yesterday plummet. It's plummeting again today. What's going on? Well, today we just had a report. GDP is down. And we have the unemployment numbers that just went up, meaning more people lost their job and more people actually stayed unemployed. So it's starting to show cracks in the foundation. So what I want to show you guys is a snippet from Rick Santelli's report this morning from CNBC, and then it gets a little confusing. So I'm going to, once he's done, I'm going to put this in common terms for you and I to understand. Then I'm going to show you a couple of diff different things that came out today just to prove to you guys uh, the economy is really starting to slow down. So without further ado, let's get over to Rick at CNBC. Let's get straight over to Rick Santelli. He's got that data for us this morning. Hey, Rick. Yes, Becky, GDP, second time around the block on the first quarter numbers, expected to be up 1.3, and it is up exactly 1.3. So we subtract three tenths from our first look at 1.6, still comps to the second quarter of 22, when we were down six tenths in terms of last time we were at these levels of GDP activity. Now, if we switch gears to consumption, 2%. We're expecting 2.2. It was 2.5. That's a rather large revision. 2% uh, is the lightest since the second quarter of 23 when it was up 8 tenths. And consumption's a big deal. The consumer's a big deal. This is going to go a long way to potentially assuage fears that the next move may be a tightening. On the price index, 3%, 3%. We're expecting 3.1 in the rear view mirror was 3.1. Still comps to 1.6. 1.6 was the lightest. That was the last quarter of last year. And keep in mind, the third quarter of last year was 3.3. So we could see that, you know, it is a drop, but it's still well above the 2% target. Now, core PCE, personal consumption expenditure price index, quarter over quarter, one-tenth drop from both expectations and the rear view mirror uh, from 3.7, new read 3.6, 3.6 still comps to the last quarter of last year in terms of smaller inflationary pressures when it was just 2%. Now, let's go to initial jobless claims. 219,000, that's up 3,000 from a slightly revised 216,000. It continues to be rather tame. And we see continuing claims remain under 1.8 million at 1,791,000. We haven't been above 1.8 since the last week in March. Now, let's look at the trade balance, which is a deficit. Expecting minus 92, it's bigger. Minus 99.4 billion, that's the largest trade deficit going back to, I'm gonna have to cipher on this one, uh, going back to, dun, 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 dun. that's taking us back all the way to May of 22, May of 22, let's call it two years. And if we look at wholesale inventories, they were up two tenths, close to expectations, reversing a negative month over month change of minus 0.4 last month. And finally, finally, retail inventories, double expectations up seven tenths. That is the biggest jump in those since it was up uh, eight tenths of a percent in the last uh, month of 2023. So that's telling you, well, let me, let me summarize it. They actually put a, a clip it out this morning that I wanna show you guys. So I'll put this link down below, but you can see right through here, the GDP, uh, came in at 1.3. They have it here. GDP previously was 3.4. So this is basically, this is the news hitting the news right now. Somebody, everybody's saying, is it, was it 1.6? Was it 1.3? Was it 3.4? All you need to know is GDP is down. Okay. That means the production in, in the United States is down. You can see that right through here. All right. So let me take my head out of this equation because I really want to dig into these numbers for you. The current GDP, this it goes over the GDP numbers. You can see that right through here. Normally, when you have two consecutive quarters of negatives, this means that we were in a recession, but uh, they, they, they rewrote what the terms or the definition of a recession is because they wanted, didn't want to say that we were in a recession, but whatever. Uh, let's go down through here. Now, here's where it starts to get into it. GDP, it goes through there. GDP, now personal income. Th this was the, this was the, I guess, eye-opening piece of this equation. Because normally when you watch a lot of videos and mainstream, all you hear is everybody's broke. Nobody has any money. Nobody has a job. And if you lose your, if you do have a job and you lose that job, you're destitute. You're destitute. You're going to be homeless. You're not going to be able to afford anything. 
but this kind of paints a little bit of a different picture. Okay. So let's get through this personal income, current dollar, personal income increased 404 billion in the first uh, quarter, a downward revision of 2.6 billion, but it was still up. Okay. That's the first thing. Disposable personal income increased 266.7 billion or 5.3% in the first quarter, an upward revision of $40 billion. Now, real disposable income, how much money you and I have after we pay all, our, all of our bills. This, this was interesting. Real disposable personal income increased 1.9% and upward revision of 0.8, okay? Personal savings was 796.6 billion in the first quarter, an upward revision of 96 billion, okay? Real uh, gross domestic income, 1.5, uh, increase 1.5, that's the GDP. But then you start going down through here. Here's where it's also interesting. Profits from current production, okay? Corporations, oh, I gotta get my head out of the way. My apologies. Decreased, decreased 21.1 billion in the first quarter in contrast to an increase of 133. So this basically is telling us profits, uh, is, is profits are starting to go down or get hit on corporations. I'm going to prove that to you here in a second as well. Profits of domestic financial corporations. Now this was the interesting piece. Financials, if you're in the financials markets, increased 73.7 billion in the first quarter compared to an increase of 5.9 in the fourth quarter. Okay, huge move here, but profits of domestic non-financial corporations decreased. Okay, so you have financial institutions who work with people with money. They're doing really well. And it's showing you most people in general are doing okay when it comes to income. Now, a lot of you guys might not be feeling that way, but guys, these are the government reports that we have to go with. All right, so let's get over to and recap what the news was today. We had GDP coming out in the last reading was 3.4. We expect to come in at 1.6, came in at 1.3. This is the misconnection with what Rick, Rick was saying. He said it was 1.3 and I was supposed to come in at 1.3. Here, here's the numbers. Previously, it was 3.4. Forecast was 1.6, came in at 1.3. So that's good. Initial jobless claims, like he said, upticked a little bit, which is good right there. So let's get over to the, the what, what the headlines are telling us throughout the, you know, this is Yahoo Finance. Let's go through here. U.S. economy grew slower. All right. Salesforce missed its sales earnings. They haven't missed an earnings report since 2008. Uh, Dollar Tree's opening some stores. Where else down there here? Uh, U.S. jobless claims edge higher. Kohl's creates uh, surprising forecast cut. So Kohl's is cutting. Some good news is maybe on the inflation front is oil. Oil's starting to really have a bad time. So why do I focus in on oil where a lot of people, other people don't? Well, oil is the lifeblood of our economy. So if oil basically that's in everything. If that price goes up, the expenses for all of us are going up. So that's that part of the equation. So it's telling us that consumers do still have money. I, we had a live event yesterday, the Kyle Seagraves and myself, there was a young man on there and I had to actually kind of point him out. It was a young man. He looked like he was probably 18 years old. He says, I make $180,000 a year. I have, the only debt I have is uh, student loan debt for about 50 grand. I have a hundred grand in the bank and I'm looking to buy a house. That, that, that's out there. Not everybody has no money, no job, no income. So I'm not downplaying anybody out there that, that's in that situation, but you can't paint a broad picture when you see a lot of this data saying financial institutions are well, consumers have more money, and uh, corporate profits are starting to really get hit right now. So based on all this information out today, guys, don't don't blame, shoot the messenger. I'm just giving you the, the facts behind what's presented to us today. And I just showed you all the headlines. What's going on with mortgage rates? What's right through here? So if you follow this right here, how do I know what's going on with mortgage rates? I follow the mortgage bond, okay? So how this works, if you're not familiar with how bonds work, if the price goes up on a bond, the price, that means the yield or the interest rate that you're getting is going down. So this is a mortgage, okay, bond. So as the price goes up, if the yield goes down, that means your mortgage rate's gonna go down. So if you see up through here, if you squint, it's up 22. That means we're probably gonna get a revision of about minus 0.8. So we're gonna get that back plus maybe a little bit more. So it might be about 7.25 by the end of today. If you're out there and you're really looking to see, you know, do you qualify to buy a house? You know, were you one of those people that you have some money, you have a good job, you have good credit. Maybe you don't have the money for a down payment. We can help you with that, okay? But if you're out there trying to kick the tires to see if you could qualify for a house, we'd love to help you. So if you don't wanna buy a house in this market, don't buy. It, it's, it's okay, you can continue to rent. But if you wanna buy, 
we'd love to help you. So how do you reach out to us? Go to the rateupdate.com. Here we are. Okay. The first thing I want you to do though, is if you're trying to buy your first house, see if you can get a grant. Okay. I don't care what your credit scores is. I don't care how much money you make. See if you qualify for these grants. Okay. They're issued by the Fannie Mae and a bank. Banks are funding these things. So uh, that's how this works. So you can click there. You're going to answer probably six, seven questions, and you'll see if you qualify for up to $7,500. So the nice thing about this is they're forgivable. They're basically, you walk out of the closing and you don't owe the money back. So basically it's, you can use it for um, down payment or even help you with the closing costs. So that's that. But if you want to get started on an application to see if you qualify or how we can help you qualify, just hit the apply now button. But you can also reach out to us directly if you'd like to call. So if you scroll down to the bottom, you can get that information right down here. You can reach us at 844-775-5626, or you can email me directly. And yes, it's me who you're replying to is dan at the rateupdate.com. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll have a report later this afternoon to tell you where the markets are, probably about midday and where the rates are at that time. So thanks for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet and you like my videos, please, you can do that right down there. Thank you so much. I'll see you later.